Welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast, where your host, Josh Sweeney, will give you, the business leaders, HR professionals, and company culture aficionados, the knowledge you need to take your company culture to the next level. Hello, my name is Josh Sweeney, and welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast. This is season two, which is all about hiring. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Prototype Prime for this amazing podcast space. I'd also like to thank my co-host, Anel Barnett, for joining me. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So today's topic is all about talent shortages. So we're going to share a little bit of information around the talent shortages that are happening, why they're happening, and all kinds of other amazing shares that are going to give you value from being a viewer and listener. So talent shortages, um, they're really happening across the board. There's huge talent shortages in every industry. I'm in technology, so I notice them more in the technology industry. Uh, we're creating lots of new jobs. Right. So one of the reasons I know in the talent in, in technology is we're literally inventing new jobs with AI and machine learning and all of these different technologies that are coming on board. So there's obviously a talent shortage because uh, the curriculum for these things don't even exist. And, right. and in the school sense, and they, they probably won't exist for years. Right. Um, There's also a, a big shortage in marketing as well. So. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shortage in marketing. Um, we have a client that has a logistics company, shortage in truckers. Yeah. Um, I actually ran a report the other day that was the top 10 industries and sectors with talent shortages. And uh, it looked pretty broad. Right. Like you could you could have just grabbed a few of the top industries out of the air and, and yeah. it would have been pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. Healthcare would be another <laughs> Healthcare? one. Yeah. Yep. You, you never, there's always health needs to take care of. So definitely. They don't yeah. seem to be going away. No. They seem to be growing, actually. Right. Um, awesome. So what are you seeing are the impacts of talent shortages in your role as a marketing specialized recruiter? Well, it certainly makes people harder to find, um, makes uh, the talented, qualified people harder to find. So uh, I would say that's the, the, you know, the biggest impact on an organization. Um, they're having to spend more time looking for individuals and investing more uh, resources and finding them. So, so the cost of acquisitions going up just sheer from a time perspective, I'm, I'm assuming the cost of acquisitions going up because you're having to pay them more to get them to leave a role. Right. And there's all kinds of expenses that, that companies are incurring to make this happen. Yeah. And it, it also is very time consuming interviewing candidates. And um, I, I mean, if, if you spend uh, six weeks interviewing a candidate and then they decide to take another job, then you have to go back to square one. And, um, you know, meanwhile, there's opportunity cost of not having an individual in that role uh, for that period of time. And then also your team is, is investing time in, in interviewing and reviewing resumes and things like that. So. Yeah. So with uh, with the talent shortage, what are the ways that you're seeing that people are working around this? What, how are they getting how are they getting creative? Maybe not to go find new talent, but how are they getting creative in the organization to overcome these shortages? Uh, definitely using uh, your internal uh, team team members. So uh, tapping into them to find uh like-minded people outside the organization that they can bring in. Um, also using your network um, to uh, solicit referrals from people in your network. You can even pay them a referral bonus. Um, sometimes that's, you know, $500 or $1,000, or it's a contribution to a, a nonprofit or the cha a charity of their choice. Um, so, I, I mean, referred candidates are really a great source of, of talent because somebody's actually validating that this person is worthy of being hired. Um, there are also, you know, potentially hiring people that have worked for you in the past is another good source of, of quality talent um, and recruiting them away from employers where they are currently. Yeah, going back to the uh, referral payment, I read an article I want to say it was years ago now. So David Cummings is a, a local and well-known Atlanta entrepreneur, sold Pardot. And um, in one of his blog posts, he had talked about, I think they gave like a $5,000 or $10,000 referral bonus mm -hmm. because they knew that you know most of their employees made a certain amount and they were already using recruiters. Right. They're like, well, if we don't have to go to a recruiter and we pay an employee 
$10,000, like that has a huge impact on the employee right. and we're actually saving money. Right. And I was like, you know, that was kind of, that was a mind shift, right? Cause mm-hmm. a lot of people try and get cheap about it. Uh, on one side, they're cheap in what they're giving their employees as a referral bonus, but they're spending a lot to make it happen in other areas. Right. So I thought that was a, just a, a completely different way of thinking about that problem. Right. Yeah. And then um, other companies are doing things like, uh, uh, going to rural areas and training individuals that would typically be a, you know, uh, they would typically be in a certain line of business or in a certain type of, of role and training them to be, for instance, a call center um, usability technician. You know, if, if somebody needs to be walked through how to use a software product or something like that, they're, um, they're training these individuals on, in a very systemized way mm-hmm. so that they can tap into uh, employees outside of the main city centers and things like that. Um, then other organizations hire people who have uh, no skills in a certain area, but they're the right cultural fit and they have the right motivation and drive, and they create uh, certification programs to train them into that specific role. Um, so that's, that's another way that they can attract talent that, you know, other companies may not realize is there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know there's only a certain pool that exists of people with a certain skill set. Right. And I've seen other companies, I think, um, C beyond another company here in Atlanta, I think they were well known from my understanding. I didn't work there, but my understanding was they would bring in college students. They knew kind of the personality profile and which ones fit for their sales force. And they ran them through a very rigorous training process. So they were creating new roles and, you know, taking a systematized, very thorough, you know, process and curriculum to bring them up to speed. So I think that's definitely a very creative way to deal with a talent shortage in, in specific areas. Yeah. And that's very common in the in recruiting sales individuals, recruiting yeah. recruiting them straight out of college because they haven't learned the word no yet. <laughs> right. um, they are not as scared of uh, making those calls as somebody who has already learned the word no and um, has more fear around that. Um, you do have to be uh, careful as an employer that um, you know you aren't recruiting like age discrimination and things like that. That you aren't recruiting, yeah. you know, only people who are 22 years old or or whatever. Um, and maybe entry level is a better way of phrasing it. <laughs> right, than, right. Than college. Well, students, I know there's but. no age discrimination at my house. My oldest son is the consummate salesperson, so yeah. he went out and uh, knocked every door in our neighborhood to sell popcorn for scouts. And, oh wow! Uh, in the first day, it was like four hundred dollars in sales. I was like, all right, man, we got to get wow. you cold calling at the company. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I did hear. Uh, I don't. I got to get with the CPA on this, but apparently, you can you can hire your own children. And pay up to a certain amount oh, wow. without, you know, dealing with any, you know, claiming benefits and all these other things. I was like, all right, man, come on in. Okay. <laughs> Let's figure this out. Right. <laughs> no age discrimination. Right. They can be as young as you want. <laughs> right. Wow. I think you don't you have to be a certain age to work. <laughs> Apparently not for your own children. Really? That's that's what wow. I read. I don't know. Uh, I, have I no would idea. Uh, again on this podcast we are not giving legal or financial <laughs> advice. Right. We are not, you know, all that legalese. Tax gonna, advice. Ta- exactly. exactly. I'm gonna throw that in there. Yes. Um, Disclaimer. You know, go talk to somebody who knows that stuff. For sure. Um, so yeah, so on the training, you know, a lot of people doing training, creating those new roles. Mm-hmm. Um I know I just read the other day, I read a book called The Great Game of Business. Uh-huh. And I I had a little bit of a mindset shift in that one that I enjoyed. Um, and I'm probably going to totally ruin, you know, how the guy, you know, tees it up in the book, but and sets it up in the book. But the concept is, uh, they had this person that was on the assembly line, they were supposed to manage and make sure that all the holes were drilled precisely, right. repeatably with certain quality. But you know, and that person did a very good job for years. But when he left that company, Company, he went and like started another company that did amazingly well. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, the concept that they were bringing home is you have all of these 
all of this knowledge locked up and and people end up hiring somebody for one role right. and say do this do this role well and never leverage the fact that you know they've had a 20 year career and some of those were in different roles and oh by the way they worked for this company and had this amazing training that would definitely help the company they're in right. but it's a little bit about outside of their wheelhouse right so it just brought in the concept of you know how are you leveraging all of the knowledge right. of every employee instead of just the knowledge for doing the one task that they were essentially hired to fill. Right. So a very creative way to deal with talent shortage and leveraging the team that you have. Right. Recruiting internally without question. Yeah, that's definitely, um, definitely a good thing to do. And, um, you know, making sure that, that your highest priorities are covered with your best people and um, that they're in the most challenging positions and that they aren't taking on um, the responsibilities of they of, often companies will give the um, the biggest pains to their best people because they know their best people will solve those those problems and those issues when in reality you should be giving your best people the the things that are their biggest challenge and that will mm. stretch them and grow them and not give them the junk and the problems right. and the, the issues and um so to your point recruiting in-house and moving people around uh, so that they're being leveraged to the best of their ability rather than um, in a position that may not be uh, challenging them to be the best that they they can be yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm sure that impacts retention if, if you're giving them all the pains and they're not really working on anything that's growing yes. them personally. Yeah. It's so not, then you just exacerbate your own problem. Right. Yeah. It's, it's it's definitely a catch-22 for an employer because they know that this person will fix this problem. Right. But it's also not what the what that employee wants to be doing on a regular basis. So it's it's you have to catch yourself as a, a hiring or as a, a manager, you have to catch yourself to be sure that you aren't giving the bad things to your good people. Yeah, growing them in the right way. Right. So what other, are you seeing any other creative ways to deal with the talent shortage that we're seeing? Um, I think adjusting your criteria is another way as well. So uh, we've talked about the purple unicorn or the purple squirrel on mm -hmm. this podcast before, but, um, you know, adjusting criteria so that you aren't looking for someone that has every single thing that's on the job right. description and um, that you're looking for somebody reasonable and then also looking for uh, the crossover skills where if uh, if someone did this role then they would likely be pretty good at doing this other role they just need a little bit of refinement or tweaking to the skill set gotcha awesome well, thank you for joining us. We hope that this is helping you come up with creative ways to deal with the talent shortage in your organization, your industry, or your department. And we appreciate you joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Epic Company Culture Podcast with Josh Sweeney. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. For additional content and transcripts, visit epicculture.co. If you have questions or topics you would like us to address or expand on, tweet us at EpicCulture1 or email at podcast at epicculture.co.